If a cat comes up and he tries to paw at it, but I, my hands are covered in raw meat, so I can't grab the sprayer to spray him. And so I just go, <laughs> I hits at the cat. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Mythical Kitchen where dreams become food. To address the elephant in the room, a lot of the foods you see me make and eat here are not foods that I make in my everyday life. Like a Cheeto apple pie is an absolutely awesome dish. I'm probably just not spending my Monday and Tuesday nights prepping and making that. So today I wanna show y'all how I actually cook in real life. I do a lot of meal prepping, but not like the bland meal prep that you see all the fitness influencers do because that would just suck eating bell peppers, chicken, and rice for your entire life. No, 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 today I'm teaching you meal prep that does not suck using three Easy hacks that you can snag right there. We got full written recipes for this all down in the description. Let's get prepping. Not like doomsday preppers though, but they seem responsible. At some point it's just responsible, right? Like keep food, like dry goods. Step one, breakfast. Josh's special homemade protein bars. You might be asking yourself, this looks more like the meal prep you would have to make like an omelet or maybe a large quiche. Nope, these are protein bars. So we got a bunch of breakfast sausage here. This is a pound of breakfast sausage and we got 15 eggs. This is what I would make and then bring it into the office. I haven't done it recently, but it would really disgust Nicole because I would make this giant sheet of baked scrambled eggs, cut them into bars, wrap them in foil, put them in the oven right when I got into work and then I eat them and then I would call my protein bar and Nicole goes, the whole kitchen smells like eggs and I'd be like, it's better than what it normally smells like, which is just me after a workout. So you're welcome, Nicole. You're the inspiration for this. Always inspiring me. So we're gonna take a whole pound of sausage, drop that into a pan, and we're gonna just get that work, and then we're gonna drop a bunch of vegetables into it, saute the sausage around. You wanna get the sausage nice and weepy before you add your vegetables to it, get some of that fat really working out. We've taken some mushrooms and we just quartered them up. I know what you're saying, Josh, if I'm meal prepping, I gotta chop all my vegetables, and someone obviously did this for you. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. It's just there's a lot of stuff and I'd be chopping. This takes literally 90 seconds to do. Dump that in there. We're gonna let the mushroom saute. Now I'm gonna start whisking up these eggs. So the idea behind this, it's like a, a, a crustless, milkless quiche. I know what you're saying, Josh. Crust and milk is what makes a quiche a quiche. Yeah, what this really is, is like a, um, a hotel continental breakfast giant tray of eggs that they just like cooked in a big old steam oven. But then there's tasty stuff inside of it so that you can just uh, eat it and microwave it uh, and it's delicious. So there we go. Yeah, mushrooms are getting nice and browned in here. And now the last step, you saute the sausage first, saute the mushrooms first, oh, cheddar cheese. Why? It tastes really good and I like it. It's good with the eggs. Gonna whisk that in there. And now that the mushrooms and the sausage are cooked, I'm gonna take all the spinach. Spinach needs to cook for like literally 30 seconds in there, it'll start wilting down. Just like dump it. And this is like genuinely the amount of care and precision that I cook with at home. I mean, it's just, it is really a pump and dump. Does that refer to breastfeeding? And just drop some cherry tomatoes in there. Stir it around, just kind of get them nice and incorporated. Uh-oh, <laughs> man overboard. If that happens on a cruise, do you think they just leave them? Right? What, what would they do? They turn the whole ship around? It's big. If it was like a one of like the onboard comedians, they would probably stop it. Cause like they are funny. You guys ever been on a cruise? Seen one of the comedians there? That's where the top talent goes, I've been told. In comedy, they go on cruises. And Lisa, are you laughing because your husband got offered a cruise position? No, but I just thought that was funny. <laughs> okay, so now we're just gonna dump dump all the pot into the eggs, and then we're just gonna like kind of mash it. The, I don't wanna use a whisk, all the sausage is gonna get trapped in the whisk. I'm just gonna use this thing to kind of stir up the eggs. If you're dumping hot ingredients into eggs, could it start to scramble the eggs? Yeah, sure, but like you're already gonna do, you're just dumping 15 eggs into a sheet and then slicing it up and eating it and telling people they're called protein bars. So, you know, it's kind of whatever at this point. Drop a whole lot of black pepper in there. A little bit of salt to season the eggs, but you do have salty ingredients there with the sausage and the cheese. So like go a little bit light on the salt, say about three quarters of a teaspoon. And now you just take, boom, bingo, bingo, egg slop into the pan. I feel like this is something that like an early food TV star would say you should like make for your kids. I feel, I know I'm plagiarizing somebody with this, but hey, this is my own original idea and I made it up and you can't sue me because my father is the highest paid lawyer in all of the Hamptons. I don't even, I just realized I have no idea what the Hamptons are. Are these like a mountain range? Egg bars are done. Now we gotta flip them. So uh, I'm baking for like 40 minutes, get some nice little browning on them. People are like, you don't want brown eggs. Why not? 
You don't know me. Yes, I do. <laughs> I like, I like brown. I like brown eggs. It's nice. Good. It's still hot. So we're gonna take some little glovey gloves and then check this out. I got a really easy method to flip it. You take a wood, <laughs> kind of wrangle it a little bit, and then you do one of one of those. And then you take this off. Then you got like a. Did parchment melt on it? What happened? Some, oh, some egg got under the parchment. That makes sense. Yeah, now you just gotta give it a little haircut because there's like a little egg. But then you can take these. These are still good. And then you can take your knife. You can measure this. It's exactly 12 inches. We know that because the pan is 12 inches. So we're gonna go exactly 2.4 inches to create five separate egg bars at exactly 2.4 inches. And this is exactly three eggs and uh, three ounces of sausage per egg bar. This is perfect breakfast for a growing boy like me. I haven't hit my growth spurt yet. What do I, do I eat it now? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's yeah, I'm gonna eat it. Now, typically I might let this sit a little bit before I eat it. Or, you know, you can take it, you can package these up, you can, you can like microwave them in the morning, put them in the oven, you know, you get to the work and you take your morning business, if you know what I mean. And you let these heat in the oven while you're doing your morning business, that's good. But instead, I just like to take a nice hot hand omelet and. Oh God. <laughs> oh. It's so hot. It tastes so good. <laughs> it's steaming at my glasses. Okay, it's hot. That's it. I'm trying to make a hand omelet. Find out, and next time I make like 50 balls of meat. A couple seconds ago, I promised you a lot of little balls of meat, and I planned to follow through on that promise. Um, I truly eat what I can only describe as an upsetting amount of meatballs week in and week out. It, literally over the last month, I have made 46 meatballs every Sunday. That's almost, that's what, like 180? It's a lot. The point is, I'm a huge fan of meatballs. Uh, I use ground turkey because it's like 60% as good as ground beef, but it makes me fart 80% less, which makes people like me 18% more. So the math really checks out of that, in my opinion. Um, but I don't know, ground turkey, man, it's healthy. It's a weekday thing. You know, might as well. Once you put enough spices and seasonings in it, that's a big thing with meal prep that I think a lot of people don't do good is their stuff is just super bland. Uh, so we're doing buffalo chicken turkey meatballs. Because ground chicken generally sucks more than ground turkey because they use white meat. Don't do that. So what I like to do to save time, I like to blend all my wet ingredients, including herbs and whatever aromatics you're using. Because I don't know, chopping stuff takes time. So I'm just gonna take green onions and just rip them up, get them in there. We're gonna add a bunch of jarred garlic, AKA jarlic, because my God, is it convenient? Again, what, 73% as good as fresh garlic? Yeah, but a hundred times easier because you just scoop it out of a jar. You just gonna dump all that garlic in there. What else? We got some blue cheese going in there. We got a little bit of Cajun seasoning. We're gonna glaze the meatballs in that. I think we're ready to blend. So meatballs, combination, two words, meat coming from the Latin for meat, ball coming from the Latin for, well, originally it meant like a, like a pella, was it pelota is the, for ball. It's like a test, it's like, so we're gonna. Oh God, it was on high. Well. We got our wets blended. Now you gotta put them into your meats. I'm a big fan of going one egg per pound of meat. We got three pounds of ground turkey here. I always budget eight ounces of animal flesh per meal that I eat, which is, that seems egregious now that I say it, but I don't know, man. I like read once that you should consume one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and I just, I've kind of been doing that for a long time. And so I'm adding the breadcrumbs, all the eggs, and all the delicious flavory things in there. Blue cheese, I really enjoy blue cheese, and they put that in um, the buffalo stuff. <laughs> I don't know, this is how I cook at home. This is what I'm doing. Uh, a whole lot of Cajun seasoning. Pre-made spice blends are another thing that I use like all the time, because that's something I can get one really costly when you're like, I need these four spices for this recipe. Each one costs nine freaking dollars. Like, no way, man, just get a pre-made. Most spices kind of taste the same. It looks really wet right now, but then I like to let my meatballs kind of soak, <laughs> soak in themselves for like 10 minutes. You know, I'll go do something, do a Sudoku while my meatballs soak. I mean, what, else, what else do people do on Sunday? Oh, religion. That makes sense. Okay, that's why I have extra time. No, this is my church that I worship at, the Church of Balls. And a great way to save time to, you don't have to ball everything you could. If you wanna see my meatball technique, I go. And then you, <laughs> it's not a great ball. That was, that was performative is what that was. That was silly of me. But I kind of ball them up and then you do that and then you bake it and that's a ball. But here, check this out. Are you ready for the pro technique? 
little ice cream scooper ball. Look at ball. <laughs> ball. <laughs> and then, and then, then what I do is my cat comes up and he tries to paw at it, but I my hands are covered in raw meat, so I can't grab the sprayer to spray him. And so I just go. <laughs> <laughs> it's it the cat. It's the only way to get him to not eat the raw meat. Um, so yeah, me on a Sunday is just me scooping 46 balls going, trying to fend off my cat with an ice cream scooper covered in raw meat. And I don't know if you imagine my private life any differently than that, but that's about what it is. So I'm gonna keep scooping these here balls for like a while. All right, we're gonna throw this in 550 degree oven for about 10 minutes. Know what you're saying, Josh, don't most people cook that at like 375 for 30 minutes? This is faster. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of blue cheese wafting around here. This is good, you can see the blue cheese kind of exploded out of these a little bit. And then this is my expert glazing technique. What you're gonna do is take all this buffalo sauce and you just drizzle it over the top of all these. You wanna get them nice and coated. And then you can take it and you just kind of violently shake it. You, well, you can kind of grab, ow, that's cool. You can kind of grab the parchment and you can kind of like, kind of like wiggle them. And then shoot. Shoot, sorry. You know, maybe you don't need to glaze them super, you just do this. We debated tossing them in a bowl, but like, I don't know, it just didn't seem right to me. And so this is now how we're glazing our buffalo meatballs. How oh, God, it's so hot. That's great though. But hey, here's the thing. You don't have to just eat these meatballs plain by themselves, though they are delicious. Give me one more bite. What you can do. This is me at home too though. Josh, what you got wrapped up into your paper towel, I'll tell you what. Got a frozen hoagie roll, defrosted a little bit, wrapped it in a wet paper towel, bakery fresh. I like to prep large quantities of meatballs, and then you can do whatever you want with them. Meatball tacos, meatball sandwiches, meatball quesadillas, meatball grilled cheeses. Anyways, I'm gonna take some ranch dressing. It's like mayonnaise, we got some other stuff in it. And I'm gonna make a little like meatball po' boy. I'm gonna tuck, tuck some lettuce in there. There we go. Get a couple slices of tomato, a little buffalo chicken meatball hoagie, ain't nothing wrong with that. Some pickles on the outside. That's a, th what's a thickle? That's not a pickle, that's a thickle. Dang, these are good. All right, you know. <laughs> now you take your meatballs, you gotta stuff them in here. <laughs> there it is. And then, uh, shoot, give me a sec. So you got that, and then now you're gonna take buffalo sauce, drizzle it over the top. More ranch, well, hold on. Let's kind of shove it in. Kind of close it, and then now you got a look, little buffalo chicken meatball hoagie, and you still got like 30 more meatballs left over. Again, you can make like tacos or quesadillas, grinders or grilled cheeses. That's <laughs> great, man. If you thought all those balls were rough and dirty, you're you're gonna love this one. You might be saying, Josh, there's there's only like three things here. This. Surely this can't come together in a whole meal. Well, watch me. First, watch me take this $1.79 a pound pork butt and break it down. There's a bone in it. <laughs> I didn't know there was a, I didn't know we got the bone in one. Well, we'll show you how to break it down. You just take a knife. Uh, we're gonna hack this meat up. We got like, uh, this is like five pounds of pork. This is like uh, four cans of salsa that we put in a bowl. Pre-made salsa roja. You can get salsa verde if you want to, but uh, I don't know, I like red stuff more than green stuff as a generality. What I do is I take this all and I put it in a pot and I throw it in the oven for about four hours, forget about it, uh, play a couple video games, come back, boom, you got dinner for a week. That's cooking, baby. Uh, let me take a knife and just run it through the bones. This isn't the right tool to do this at all then. I know what you're saying, Josh, you got all this fancy cooking equipment and a budget. You got a big old fancy knife. I'm gonna show you how to do this without a knife. This is an oyster shucker. You probably don't have one of those either because you shouldn't because it's dumb. But just know that it's like dull and it's worse than a knife. And you're just gonna take this and you're just gonna cut, find the bones and shave all this meat off. You're gonna hack it up and throw it into a bunch of jars of salsa in a pot. There's nothing, like, like, there's no wrong way to do it. You just gotta get the meat off. Yeah, I gotta hold it up. A lot of butchers do that, stabbing motion. There we go. Oyster shucker, not bad for hacking up pork. I want like solid inch cubes. You could just throw the whole thing in there for like four hours and then you're gonna get nice like shreddy carnita style pork. I like my pork in chunks. Also, people might say, hold on, is this heating? You gotta shuffle the pans around to make it hot. Sometimes the, the thing doesn't know there's a pan there. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna heat some water. Yeah, that was on for 10 minutes. No sizzle on that water. All right, so we're gonna take all this jarred salsa. Maybe got some chipotles in there. I don't know, it's gonna cook with the pork fat. It's all gonna taste nice. We're not gonna sear the perk for Perk forced? We're not gonna sear the pork first. A lot of people say, they say, they say, Josh, you gotta sear the meat first or else there's no flavor. The guy on the food TV, he told me so. Stupid. Like a lot of cultures around the world just don't sear meat before making soups. They'll blanch it and do other stuff. 
You just throw it in and you cook it and you can just eat it. You don't have to sear it. So I'm still working with my oyster shucker here. I got this. We're gonna hack this into like one inch chunks. That's a little big. That's fine. You can use your teeth. Another tool for cooking is your teeth. All right. And so uh, we literally just throw that in there. Throw some salt in there. Salt tastes good. There's pork. What do you mean? No, no, Ben, we're gonna watch me do this. I need to prove to them that you don't need good equipment that you can use a butter knife to hack up your pork. No, 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 Ben, I gotta prove it. Ben, I gotta prove it. Don't, don't let Ben come, don't turn off the cameras. Don't you dare turn off the cameras, I swear to We took the pork out of the oven. I stopped threatening our camera people. Sorry about that, Maggie. Got a little carried away with the oyster shucker. Anyways, we've taken the pork and the jarred salsa. Actually, it wasn't jarred. It was specifically canned salsa because it's a lot cheaper. And I just have them stacked really high in my pantry at home. But look how good that looks. Like what an enticing bowl of food. There's something about the pork fat and the thyme that like literally just kind of, I don't know, what's that word? What's that word? Um, transmogrifies. Weird, stupid SAT word. Transmogrifies the dish into being something, you know, elevated and nice. And so we got our little pork stew. Now let me show you my favorite side dish. It's called like rice bean slop with some vegetables. I have a couple different types of meals. You've, you've seen most of them. This is my favorite for dinner. It's called slop bowl. What I do is I eat all of my meals at home out of a very shallow bowl, but it's wide. And then I'll take some combination of vegetable. This is called zucchine. It's Italian, it's very fancy. Uh, also they keep really long in your fridge and there's minimal prep work to be done on them. You don't really gotta do anything. You get kale, you gotta like strip it, you gotta clean it. This, no, you just chop it into little things. They cook in like three minutes. And so we're gonna cook the zucchine, Italian again, very fancy, uh, for like a couple seconds. This is a single can of beans. I didn't make them. No, if I made beans, they would taste just like this. They did it in a can, cost 70 cents. Do that, I drained it, rinsed it to get the metal taste off. This is rice. Uh, so sorry, this is this is it. I ate a meatball off camera. I ate another one. Yep, uh, sorry, burps. Now we got rice, this is quick cook rice. You could buy the long cook rice and then try and make it perfectly and invariably screw it up. Unless you have a rice cooker or you're just like good at cooking rice, but I don't know. On a weekday, I just get the stuff that cooks in a minute and then I drain it and then I have it. And then you can just like saute vegetables, get a little nice char on them. And then you just go dump in some beans, dump in a little bit of rice. And then you just take this and you kind of like do that a little bit. You hit it with some salt so it tastes nice. Take a spoon, bash up the rice. And uh, yeah, now you can now you can do this fun little tossy toss thing. Ah, you could add other flavors to it. You could throw in like a lime, but then you know, you think if you have a lime in the fridge and then you might, and then you're like, no, I think those are old. I got them for cocktails like three weeks ago. And you're like, even if I did, what am I gonna do? Get another cutting board, get a knife for one lime wedge, and then, and then, you have to put half a lime back in the fridge, and you know that's just gonna sit there, and you can't just throw it away because your girlfriend goes through the trash and goes, why'd you throw away half a lime? And you're like, because we have 18 half limes in there that are gonna go bad anyways. I, I don't know what to tell you. And so this is gonna saute for another minute, and then you can kind of like, I don't know, stay here and be like, if I scoop the cat's litter right now, then I'm gonna smell like cat litter while I'm cooking. But then you're like, well, when else am I gonna do it? And so you just kind of go do it. And then your food's gonna be perfumed by cat litter a little bit. This is what Sundays look like for y'all. <laughs> Boom, take that right in a bowl, mash it around with that. And then you take some of this here bubbling stew. Uh oh, dude, we made pad egg. <laughs> Rolls. All right, hold on, then you take some of this bubbling stew. If you want to put some lime, some raw onions, if you want to make pickled onions, we've done them plenty of times on the show, you can absolutely find that recipe for it. Hold on, let me just get a nice little, another scoop of pork on there. And here you go, here's Josh's deluxe delicious slot bucket supreme. Uh, no garnish, well, hold on, boom, garnished. And done, this is it. This is a tasty, nutritious bowl of food that I would gladly eat five days out of five. All right, to dig in, you can take some hot sauce out of your pouch. This is another great thing for meal prep. I'll just keep a bunch of hot sauce in your pouch. Because even if your food's bland, you, you can really hot sauce it up. It's gonna taste good. This is steaming hot. Ooh. It's like a warm bowl of sunshine, man. A giant hunks of pork. Everyone who is impressed by fall off the bone tender meat, just cook it longer at a low temperature and it'll fall off the bone. Like it'll be super tender. There's no trick to it. It's also not even a skill. You just leave it. Literally the skill is in taking it out. You don't have to do that. It takes less skill to make fall off the bone tender meat because you don't have to do anything. Just leave it in a low oven covered. Delicious nutritious, oh it's hot. Oh God, it's so hot. 
I hope you gleaned something from how to meal prep today. This is truly the most accurate representation of how I cook and eat for myself at home. If you do any of this, uh, tag us on Instagram. That's at Mythical Kitchen under hashtag dreams become food. Thank you so much for stopping by. We got new episodes on YouTube out every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. If you do the Instagram thing like Anson did, Anson made hamburger meat pie with a bacon lattice crust. That's pretty rad. Shout out to Anson. Shout out to all you. Comment below what you think my egg bars should be called when they eventually go to market and how much you would pay for them. $35 per bar? Let me know. More, you say? I'm gonna keep eating this pork. This is dang. Stop feeling that. Oh, see you on next, see you next, see you next time. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Hill Strike tea now at mythical.com.